Hello, and welcome to another episode of Growing for Wholesale Standards. For today's episode, we're going to continue our discussion of USDA grading specifications for winter squash, but we're going to move on to spaghetti. Now, before I get into the exact USDA grading specifications, I just want to share some helpful tips, tricks, and reminders for growers to get as many number one quality graded products off of your property in a little segment I like to call, don't forget to. Now, if you've been watching these other grading videos that we've been putting out, uh, this is the same information I've used in those, so feel free to jump ahead to the time you see below. Alrighty, so don't forget to... Don't forget to test your soil, uh, rotate your crops, build your soil organic matter, make sure you have enough nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in your soil, and make sure to check your soil pH. Uh, all fruits and vegetables have a pH tolerance level, so make sure that yours is at the right pH for squash. You may need to add something to balance it out. Don't forget to scout weekly, physically inspecting your plant stems, the top of the leaf, and the bottom of the leaf. What you're looking for are any pests like the cucumber beetle, the squash vine borer, and the squash bug, but you're also looking for any signs of disease such as fusarium, powdery, or downy mildew. Here you can see some uh, squash bugs that are on the top of a leaf plant. So don't forget to carry guides with you. I recommend carrying a disease guide, a pest guide, and a beneficial insect guide. This will help identify for you whether you're looking at squash bug eggs or ladybug eggs. What you can see here is the Southeastern U.S. 2016 Vegetable Crop Handbook. I'll have that link below as well. Uh, that is a great resource for you guys. Click on that and you can download it, print it off. I also have here Insect Disease and Weed ID Guide. This is a very helpful book uh, to carry around with you and keep notes in. I will put the link uh, to where you can purchase this below as well. Don't forget to check your labels on whatever you're using as an input. The label is a law. Not all inputs are certified uh, for use by your distributor or your certifier. So just make sure whatever you're using uh, input-wise has been approved. Don't forget that disease can occur in the post-harvesting process. Uh, so if you're looking to store anything before you wash it and grade it, make sure you're storing it at the appropriate humidity and temperature. For winter squash, especially spaghetti squash, uh, you can have white mold that can start to grow on the stem. We'll talk more about that later. If you're looking to store winter squash for a long term, check out the link below. Uh, it's all about how to build a hard squash storage tunnel. This thing is great. It's easy to make. Uh, you can get all the equipment that you need at your local harbor store. shouldn't take more than an hour. And in the end, you'll see in the video how we put two temperature gauges in the storage tunnel. This is so you can monitor the humidity and the temperature to make sure that nothing is growing, such as white mold on the stems. Don't forget that your buyer has a very particular date in mind when they will be purchasing this product off of you. So for spaghetti squash, work backwards. It takes about 90 to 100 days for it to fully mature. Learn that purchasing date from the buyer, 100 days backward, and you have your planting date. Okay, so a fully matured spaghetti squash should have a diameter of 5 to 7 inches, should have a length between 9 to 11 inches, should have a weight between 2.5 to 4.5 pounds, and should have a uniform yellow coloring. Remember, green stripes reflect an immaturity in the squash. And spaghetti squash is very thin flesh, so it can be easily damaged. Now here you can see the USDA number one grading specifications. Outlined here you can see a similar varietal characteristics. Uh, this means uniformity. So if you're looking at two perfect squash, they have no damage, they're fully well matured, but they don't have the same length and weight. These are both number ones, but they should be put into separate boxes because we're also grading by uniformity. Uh, a graded number one will also be well matured. So for squash, green stripes at the top reflect an immaturity in the fruit. So just keep that in mind with well matured as a graded number one squash. Grade number one squash is also free from any breaks or cracks. It is free from any damage, any damage at all. We're talking scar damage, dry rot, freezing, dirt damage, disease, insect damage, mechanical, or any other means of damaging this product. This is the perfect looking squash 
that, that you have. Here you can see what the USDA outlined as a number two. And you can see the major difference comes down to fairly well matured. But this doesn't really give you a good idea of exactly what that would look like as a number two. Here you can see some spaghetti squash that has been graded as a number two. Except one of these spaghetti squash should not be a number two. See if you can spot it. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, these are number twos. This one's a little immature. We can see a lot of green on it and less yellow. Uh, this one maturity is okay. Uh, probably that's a little smaller. We've got some issues. So size really knocks this one out. Similar on really these four are size. This one's probably on the lower limit of acceptable size. I wanted to, yeah. We have a significant amount of scarring and discoloration. Again, sound fruit, uh, no leaking, no holes, but that's a fair amount of damage. And so uh, most buyers would have a problem if they see that frequently in a box. Ideally, you'd have the stem attached. And what has happened is the stem has become detached but it's not soft, uh, so it has dried over, it has basically hardened over, so it's not going to be an issue with immediately rotting. Ideally, you would have the stem attached, and that's another reason why this is one that probably we should put to the second. There's, some, there's a little immaturity. Again, it's not over the whole fruit. Uh, it's not uncommon to see one side of the fruit be a little bit greener than the other, uh, but it's not uh, at full absolute maturity. But the biggest thing on this is size. Uh, it's really on the very lower limit and we have some discoloration, some scarring, uh, and it's missing the stem. So likely I would push this to a number two. We also have some, what well, looks like fresh wounding, probably from stems in the box, or maybe when they were harvested. Uh, and so those probably would push it all, you know, in some total to a number two. Okay, so we have a pretty good idea uh, what a number one would be, what a number two would be. So what would not be a number two? This feels really squishy, like that top part. Agreed, yeah, that's actually, looks like maybe or damage or something similar to that. Uh, that is definitely not a number one. Uh, that's not going to have any sort of shelf life to it. In fact, when this starts breaking down, it's going to cause everything else in that box to go south. I would consider this a coal because that is a lack of quality. It's not going to uh, store any length of time, and so it's going to be a coal. Uh, it's not a sound fruit. Here you can see some white mold that's starting to grow on the stem of this spaghetti squash. Now we talked about this a little earlier when we were discussing humidity and temperatures when storing spaghetti squash. We're going to go now to Scott Gerald, the Scott County Extension agent in Virginia, to discuss uh, why this occurred and what you should do if you have white mold on your spaghetti squash stem. What I would do is set them out and let them dry down more because the moisture in that stem is where that white mold is coming from. There's nothing on the fruit itself. It's more on the stem, so that tells me that the fruit is starting to harden off, but the stem is still a little moist and is giving the mold a, a place to grow. Here's a good example. When you've got a shorter stem that's dried out completely, we're not going to see that much, but if we look at longer stemmed um, squash that's in a bin, sets up over time, that humidity rises, the stem can't dry out well enough to not support the mold growing. When you start to break into the stem itself, you can see a little bit of black mold starting. And that to me, you know, the immaturity of the, the plant itself where the vines hadn't died down good. Uh, longer stems on them when they're in storage. And then just having, you know, having a little higher moisture stem is probably what's contributing to that. Alrighty, so you think you have a good handle on what could be a number one, a number two, or what should go to the pigs? Well, let me test your knowledge right here. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. Um, I'll leave the picture up for a, a couple of seconds. Take your best guess, and then I'll let you know where it fell. I'm going to show you some pictures. Let me know. Take your guess. Alrighty, is this a number one, a number two, or pig feed? First or second. I'd probably put that one in a one. I don't think there's enough damage and it is uniform enough. Number one, number two. 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 A lot of scarring. A lot of scarring. You know, anytime I see more than something about a 50 cent piece, that's going to put it into a number two bin. Number one, number two. 
I would put that in a number one. You know, number one or number two. Is it characteristic to type? You know, when we look, it doesn't look like it's filled out enough. Right. When we look at it, it is characteristic to type. When you look at spaghetti squash, most of the time you're going to see one end, your vine end that's a little bit smaller. Would you cut but a little bit more of that stem off? I would. I take about half that stem off. And the stem being cut a little more, it would go as a one. Correct. Yes, a graded number one spaghetti squash, but that is a really long stem. Cut them down to an inch. Stems should be cut down to an inch uh, before they're boxed. But really, best harvesting practices, you would want to cut them down to an inch when, you're, when you first harvest it. That way, in transportation, if you're going somewhere to wash and grade, they're not cutting up in against each other. And it also saves you time later when you're washing and grading in labor costs if you need to cut them, go back and cut them. So best harvesting practice, cut them to an inch if you can when you're very first picking and that will save you time and it will reduce the risk of them getting cut in transportation. So once you've finished sorting and grading your product, it is time to box it. Now number ones, as we previously talked about, those are going to your wholesale buyer. So box presentation, box count, box weight, all that is extremely important. So at Appalachian Harvest, we use bushel 1 and 1 9th wax line boxes with inserts. And our buyers require a weight of 35 pounds. So that can equate between 8 to 14 spaghetti squash. Now remember, uniformity is key. Presentation is key. The very last step is to apply labels. So the very first label that you're going to apply is a PLU label. That's price lookup code uh, that wholesale buyers use to identify any produce. Uh, so here you can see that there are different labels for your organic and conventionally grown produce. Okay, so what you want to do is apply a PLU label on the outside of the box so the buyer knows what's on the inside and then you want to put enough inside for them to apply in every single one of your spaghetti squash. So with a count between 8 and 14, best practices just throw in 20 PLU stickers and that will cover any that get wet or damaged along the way. Okay, so the next label you'll want to apply is a point of origin label. This identifies where the product was graded and boxed. Uh, here you can see this was done at Appalachian Harvest. It also identifies whether the product is conventional or organic. And if it is organic, who certified it? <laughs> Lastly, we have our traceback code. So this lets the buyer trace back the product all the way to the exact field it was grown on. So looking at it, it looks like a bunch of numbers just in two rows. But those first four digits on the left, 1031, that is an assigned grower code. Uh, that we gave that particular grower and then you can see the next three numbers are the Julian calendar day so day 285 is October 12th dropping down to that second line we can see that this was uh, harvested in the year 14 those are the, that's the year and then moving over you see 0202 this is internal record keeping from the farmer which identifies this was field number two and crop number two so this label is incredibly important. This covers all traceability requirements through your GAP certification. Alrighty, so once that last label has been applied, let's just zoom on out here. Beautiful. This box has all three labels. It is ready to get placed on a pallet, wrapped, and sent to your buyer. Well, that's everything for today's episode. Stick with us. We're going to continue with winter squash grading and dive into acorn and delicata in future episodes. Hope to see you then on Growing for Wholesale Standards.